Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be taking super, super trendy nail art design and making it very neutral to make them fall appropriate. That being said, I'm super transparent when it comes to creativity block on my channel. It is real and I go through it a lot. Now, when I am going through one of these moments and my coworker is there and her client's there, I always make a point to say something just in case they can give me even a color or somewhat of an idea of what I can do. My coworker's client mentioned moths. And at first I was like, moths, what the heck? We're used to thinking that they're not cute, right? So I ended up Googling an image and oh my gosh, they look like butterflies. They are so freaking pretty. And all the fall vibes and the colors were definitely there. So I took that simple idea and I created this entire design based off of that. Of course, I didn't draw out the exact moth. I definitely made it more on the trendy side. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. But before we get into the tutorial portion, I have some serious stuff I want to talk to you guys about. So first on the list is today is Sunday, November 6th. I'm currently on my way to Miami, Florida to a nail class. So if you guys did not know, I have been traveling to do nail classes with a lot of you. I've had the pleasure of meeting a ton of you guys and it is amazing, honestly. I love it. It's like my favorite part of teaching. Now we are going to be doing a two-day class November 8th and 9th with McCart. It's gonna be two other educators as well. And then we're also gonna be doing a meet and greet the 7th of November. So the day before the class, we are gonna be doing a meet and greet. So if you are in the area you still have time to sign up we still have seats available and I cannot wait to meet all of you guys and just see how much you guys improve in your nail game after attending the class now that that's out of the way I talked earlier this year about doing a giveaway when it got to my 300th episode and I am mind boggled that it has been 300 episodes now and it is insane to me now that's how much videos I've created for you guys like it's crazy. So I always try to give back. You guys know I love you guys and I feel like you guys always show so much love and support through messages, through comments on all of my social media platforms. So a huge I love you for those of you that do show love. Even just like my videos, share them. I 100% appreciate you guys. Now for the giveaway portion, we are going to be gifting one silicone practice hand. So the hand that you see in the video is going to be sent to one lucky winner. It's going to come with all this essential so that you can do a perfect set on your practice hand. It's going to be like your best client. So I am very excited to send that to one of you. Of course, you're going to have the option to choose the skin tone as well. So that's always a plus. Along with that, I'm going to be gifting you $500 for Amazon. That way you can purchase all of your nail essentials to get started or continue your nail career. I 100% percent love Amazon. It is fast shipping, especially if you have Prime. And then there's just so many different brands and so many products that you can purchase off of theirs. Now how to enter the most important part. Throughout the entire video, you're going to have three different questions pop up right here on the screen throughout. So make sure you guys are paying attention. And then when you find those questions, number them in the comment section one, two, and three, and go ahead and answer those questions. And you will automatically be entered into the giveaway. Good luck to all of you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now let's get right into it. right into today's video we are starting off by applying this beautiful acrylic color i definitely thought it was going to be a lot lighter but it still went with the vibes that i was going with so here i am using carmelo from vanessa nails i've been wanting to use more of her products since i did stock up pretty good on some of her colors so here we are using this beautiful muted brown color it has a little bit of like an undertone of like reds and oranges so i was definitely really excited to try this out especially for now the fall time so we are applying it with the not polished monomer and along with that i'm using my profiles backstage acrylic brush in a size 12. 
so I'm using that combination for today's application I'm just gonna be going in and adding this to the entire nails I wanted to really mess around with this product just to kind of see how it worked out and how it blended how the opaqueness the pigment and all that stuff was in it so right off the bat a hundred percent think that is super super blendable the color is absolutely stunning and the pigmentation in it is very very opaque which I absolutely love and because it's very blendable I think it's a perfect combination a lot of the time when colors are very pigmented they are not blendable they come off very chalky but definitely works out really really great so I'm already very excited to be using more of her products I have used them before in the past but not for the entire set so definitely really excited to be using it I'm starting off in the middle section and applying a medium-sized bead we're gonna be working our way downwards and then back upwards towards the cuticle I'm just doing my basic acrylic application now please do note that for these nails I'm not building them up as I typically would on a client because this is just a practice hand so I'm not going to be building up any apex they are gonna be pretty flat in that area but I'm still building it up nice and thick so that I can shape them out perfectly so I'm gonna be layering on that product to the existing acrylic that I already placed and you can just tell that it blends out very easily it does lay a little bit different when I first put it on the nail but that has happened before with other powders already so that's nothing out of the ordinary my biggest thing is getting it to blend out and move where I want it to that is where I'm going to like pretty much criticize a product more than the way that I place the bead um, the consistency of it is perfect now I definitely could have used Vanessa nails monomer I just couldn't find it at the moment so I went ahead and just used it with a different monomer I'm sure both of her products in combination would make an even better blendable acrylic so definitely recommend that as well but we're just gonna be going with it I absolutely adore it I will definitely be testing out more colors of hers I have some glow powders so I'll definitely be using those especially for like new year vibes definitely recommend it y'all go check out her stuff I do have a discount code with her so make sure you guys use that to save a little bit of money
Now, once I'm done applying that beautiful color, we are going to be encapsulating. The reason why I'm doing this is because I did lay it pretty thin and I like to encapsulate darker, more pigmented acrylics anyways. It's gonna give it the strength that you would need for especially the length of the nail. And I always just recommend it to save some product regardless. So I'm gonna be going in and adding a thin layer of this to add a little bit more thickness so when I go in and file, they don't get super, super thin since I am already laying it very thin. Now, once everything is nice and dry, I'm going to be going in with my filing process. I'm actually going to just be filing around that cuticle area. The reason why I'm using my e-file for this step is because I feel like I get a better flush cuticle area when I use my 5-in-1 bit. I do have my e-file at a speed of 8,000 RPMs for this process. And then I'm actually going to be taking my hand file and filing the rest of the nail. I have been loving hand filing and I've been using it a lot in a lot of my videos. So I wanted to incorporate that as well in today's video. So first I'm starting off with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file. It is my all time favorite go to hand file. If you are struggling with shaping, check this out, try it out. And I promise you it definitely makes a huge difference for shaping. Now, once I'm done with the sides, I'm gonna go very quickly over top of the surface of the nail. And I'm just gonna be filing very roughly, kinda just going over it to smooth everything out. The reason why I kinda like using a hand file as well is because you can cover more surface and file a lot quicker than with an e-file. And you have to make sure with your e-file you have like the perfect pressure throughout the entire portion. Otherwise, you will be over filing some areas and leaving ridges. And I know for a beginner, it can definitely be tricky. So I always recommend and use a hand file if you are struggling with your e-file but like I said for that cuticle area I definitely prefer to make everything nice and flush and seal the cuticle area with my bit.
Now I'm flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective. I always do this on my practice hand as well because it allows me to look at the nails from a different angle and I'm going to be able to square off that tip very nicely. Still using my hand file, I kind of just go back and forth, making sure that I have really, really good grip of that practice hand or my client's finger so that it doesn't wiggle all the way back and forth. It is very uncomfortable if you do not hold it nice and steady. Now to get rid of like more of the harsh lines from the hand file, I am actually taking my mandrel bit and sanding band, both from Profiles Backstage. The purple sanding band is in medium grit. I absolutely adore these. In my eval, still at 8,000 RPMs at this point, I do have it pretty high. I'm gonna be using that to smooth everything out right before I go in with the buffer. This is just kind of something that I've been messing around with because I used to do this a lot when I was working full-time on clients. So I wanted to start implementing that back into my routine just to see how I like the difference of of it versus just going directly in with the buffer and I definitely do like it it smooths everything out it gets rid of those harsh lines and I almost feel like you don't necessarily have to go in with the buffer if you use a fine grit sanding band so definitely try that out if you guys do not like using buffers I'm going in with my buffer from a card. These have been my go-to lately. It's a little bit more on the coarse side in comparison to the ones that I've been using. So I definitely really feel like this gets rid of more of the harsh lines. And if you want something super, super smooth, I would definitely recommend the ones that I was previously using from Profiles Backstage. They are super, super smooth. Now for today's nail art, I am going to be first cleaning off the surface. I am using a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. You could always use alcohol as well or just some water, but I prefer this method. I just feel like it gets everything fully out and kind of just smooths everything over as well. Now for the nail art, I had no idea what I wanted to do and I always try to get ideas from my coworkers or my friends. I say coworkers because then it will make a little bit more sense. They are in the salon when I ask them, but they are absolutely my friends. We're pretty much family now at this point. So my friend that was sitting right next to me working had her client and I kind of was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm pretty much just wasting time. So if y'all have any ideas, let me know. And her client um, threw some ideas out there and then she said, do moths. And I was like, you know what? That wouldn't be a bad idea. So here we are. We're going to be doing a kind of like mix match type of design that is very, very trendy. And it has been trending since the beginning of the year. But we're going to make it fall. So for the pinky, we're doing just like a little swiveled kind of design in black. I'm going to be using a lot of like burnt orange with black and cream color and green just to kind of tie everything in for the fall time so we're starting off with a little body for the moth and i'm pretty much just doing like a rounded out pointed body and then i'm actually going to be doing the the wings this is all going to be pretty much like a silhouette at this point and then we're going to be adding in the details with whatever color you choose i ended up going with the burnt orange color from profiles backstage but we're just going in with that color and we're going to be doing that silhouette first i felt like it was just going to make everything a lot easier than having to go in and draw every single little section I'm trying to find ways that help me be a little bit more productive and not take five years because i am definitely that person that will take the long route for no reason so we are using my favorite brush from a cart it is from amazon absolutely love these nail art brushes i 100 percent feel like they are worth the money even though they're not expensive definitely stock up on these they are really really good so i'm using that for the silhouette portion of course cure in the light whenever you are going to be going in with your detailed always 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 make sure that you are curing before you go in and outline so like i mentioned i'm going in with whatever color you choose i ended up going with this burnt orange color from the fall gel art liner collection from profiles backstage it is my favorite burnt orange kind of more of a muted orange for the fall time really really like it and I'm going in with my same nail art brush and we're gonna be outlining the body and then the wings as well. 
So I had different options when it came to doing the moth. Of course, you can go super, super intricate. Um, she mentioned an Atlas moth, which is definitely fall vibes. However, I didn't want to get super intricate because I always try to do my designs as beginner friendly as possible so instead of going the more complicated route and the more detailed route i decided and opted for just something simple and very very cute and very trendy so we're doing the silhouette of the moth and then i'm going to be outlining it with that pumpkin color and then you want to cure that in the light of course i'm also taking a brown and we're going to be doing dots for some little flowers and i'm also just doing polka dots with that same orange color on the inner wings so you'll kind of just see me doing everything very quickly at this point i realized that the body was not the typical shape of a moth's body so i went ahead and just took a little bit of alcohol and on my brush i cleaned it up a little bit so that i can go in and redo it it kind of has more of like an hourglass type of figure that I did not realize. So we're just going to be fixing that very, very quickly. And then we're going to be adding those little dots to that inner wing. And I'm just simply taking that color and just dotting it on there. I feel like as of recently, it has been super trendy to take a silhouette of something and then infill it with something else. So I definitely wanted to do that with this moth design and add flowers in there with the fall vibes. I definitely could have added leaves or like for Halloween, you totally could do pumpkins and stuff like that. But because it's such a small space to draw on, I figured flowers would just be a lot easier to do a few petals and you still get the point of what I am infilling it with. So definitely love this type of trend. I'm gonna be adding some more little details in there. And then I'm going to be outlining the pinky nail with the colors that I'm incorporating throughout the entire set. So we're gonna be taking the green color, which is called Franz for Life from Kiara Sky. It is also a gel polish. And then here I am using the brownie points gel polish from Kiara Sky as well. And then of course, the cream color from profiles backstage which is their fall collection gel art liner i love all their fall colors they are absolutely beautiful so we're starting off with that pumpkin color i'm going to be curing that in the light and then going in with the other one so that they don't bleed into each other so always make sure that you are curing in between layers and then for the index finger i wanted to do an accent nail i've been wanting to do checkered nails i don't know why i feel like it just looks super super cute it's like a really simple cute accent so i've been wanting to incorporate it and since i didn't know what i was doing on this design i was like you know what let me just throw it on there worst case scenario i don't like it it clashes too much so then i could just file it off and i totally would have showed you guys me filing it off as well you guys know i like to be super transparent with everything so we're starting off i did switch out my nail art brush into the not polish liner because it is a lot skinnier in the bristles and it is a lot longer so it's gonna allow me to do more of a longer stroke when it comes to the perfect line so i'm just doing lines vertically and then horizontally i'm trying to space them out as best as possible so that they can be all nice and even it is really tricky but kind of just try to eyeball it I know I did fail on some of them, but it's fine. It still looks really, really good. Now for the infilling part to make our life a little bit easier, we're just gonna be infilling every other square. And then on the second row, third, fourth, and etc., you're gonna be doing the opposite. So as you can see, that one is in the middle of the first two, and then the other ones are gonna be the same as the first row. And you just alternately kind of do that throughout the entire nail until everything is fully checkered. Super, super easy process. I did end up switching my brush back into the McCart one just because it is a lot shorter. The bristles are a lot thicker, so I'm going to be able to infill a lot quicker. And it definitely did make a huge difference. So make sure you guys have a lot of different brushes available and on hand so that you guys can just work a lot more efficiently. I 100% was always against it. I don't know why. I felt like it was going to be more work, but heck no. It makes our life a little bit easier. And just having different options for different colors is so much easier and definitely a lot quicker than trying to clean off one brush to use for the next color. So.
And then as always, don't forget to cure in the light whenever you feel it is necessary and when it is actually absolutely necessary. I'm going to be layering on more designs on top, so I wanna make sure that it is fully cured. I am absolutely curing in between each color, again, so that they don't melt and blend together. And it's not gonna look as crisp, obviously, once you do that. I flipped around the hand to see if that would make it a little bit easier. I've seen people do that. I don't think it made like a huge, huge difference, but I could see where it could be beneficial in some type of designs. And then again, for the middle finger, I had no idea what the heck I wanted to do, but I wanted to incorporate a little bit more of that cream color. So I opted for a bigger flower. We're just doing the petals here. I'm trying to space them out as even as possible and try to make them all the same shape. This is probably the trickiest part whenever you are doing a design like this. I don't know. I feel like I sometimes eyeball it correctly and then sometimes like there's just way too much space left in between one petal or the other and it is super frustrating, but it ended up working out pretty good. And then to add some more black in there, I wanted to go in and outline the petals. So always, again, make sure to cure that in the light. But I'm just going in with my liner brush once again and going in very, very carefully and holding my breath quite a bit to do this process. I wanted to make them all as even as possible and it was definitely very, very tricky. And then I'm going to be adding some more dots in there as well and then kind of just finishing off the design with a final cure. You want to make sure you put that in for another 60 seconds and then we're going in with Matte It From Not Polish, fully coating the entire surface, making sure that I have a good even thin layer across the entire nail curing that in the light for another 60 seconds. But that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton. And I'll see you guys next time.